In the spring of 2010, I will be teaching a topic seminar on the history of anti-war art. And to ground us and give us a little bit of focus in the seminar so it doesn't get too wide too quickly, we'll begin with Pablo Picasso's 1937 mural, Guernica, which was inspired by the bombing of the small Basque town. So what we'll do is look at Guernica as our pivotal image, our founding moment, for thinking about how artists can intervene in a public space and registering their protest. We'll think a little bit about what it means for artists to use their creative work toward political ends, how effective that might be. And we'll talk then about a continuity of sensibility in modernism by which artists want their work to stand for something, in this instance, peace and democracy, and stand in opposition to something. Some of the, the groups we'll be looking at, for instance, the American Artists Congress, founded in 1935, were very much aware that if their protest was going to have resonance, it needed to get out into the world. And partly that meant finding venues, whether museums or galleries, that were sympathetic to this kind of art. Often it meant putting the art in venues that we might not traditionally identify uh, with the art world. For instance, the union halls were very important for the American Artists' Congress because part of their argument uh, as members of the old left was that if there was imminent war, and it seemed like there really was by 1936, especially with the outbreak of the Civil War in Spain, if there was imminent war, by and large, those men doing the fighting would come from the working class, as had been the case in World War I. And these artists were left in their politics. Uh, some were socialists. Some were New Deal Democrats, although they, they felt that uh, Roosevelt wasn't moving fast enough in relief uh, in various ways. Uh, some were probably communists or communist sympathizers. So they believed then that the art had to get out into the world in an appropriate venue. This strikes me as offering an interesting parallel to what some of our students are doing via CODA and some of our other outreach programs where they're taking things that they learn in the classroom and then putting them to work in real life situations uh, with individuals who don't have the same education or sometimes economic background that so many of our students have. There's this long history of artists wanting to get out into the world and this becomes an interesting question. How do you interact with a community that is not your own community? How do you find means of depicting experiences in a way that a community can embrace and recognize as their own without either pandering to them or condescending to them? This is an ongoing history of interventionist art uh, that we now are much more sympathetic about, recognizing that an artist might have a role to play in a community, but that community doesn't belong to that artist. And how do you then guarantee a mutual view there? Or, or how does an artist move into a community, not speaking on behalf of that community, but maybe speaking with that community to help them articulate their needs and their desires?